The WWE's Royal Rumble is an annual event where 30 different wrestlers enter the ring at timed intervals, trying to eliminate each other and win the title. In true WWE fashion, this event isn't limited to just wrestlers, and deep into the 2022 hosting of the event, out walked Bad Bunny. The musician would put up an impressive performance, eliminating two other wrestlers before falling to the eventual winner, Brock Lesnar. This WWE appearance not only reflects Bad Bunny's nearly unparalleled popularity in Latin music, but also his versatility across entertainment. While his earlier albums embraced this versatility, spanning Latin trap, reggaeton, art rock, and many other genres, his fourth studio album, Un Verano Sin Ti, is relatively constrained, sticking mostly to reggaeton. Despite this project's focus, Bad Bunny still explores the limits of the genre, and I wanted to look at three of those interpretations. So let me show you what I found as we listen to Bad Bunny's Un Verano Sin Ti. Puerto Rico's underground music scene in the late 1980s was full of US hip hop and Jamaican dance hall. DJs inspired by the two genres started combining them into what would become the first reggaeton tracks, although the movement was met with heavy opposition by the authorities for its subversive nature. It wasn't until the early 2000s that reggaeton gained international popularity and coalesced into what appears on this Bad Bunny album. <laughs> This is Moscow Mule, the opening track on Un Verano Sinti, produced by Mag, La Paciencia, Mick, and Scott. I think it's a good introduction into the reggae tone of this album, laying out some basic conventions like the foundational rhythmic pattern. The kick here hits on every beat, while the snare falls in between, alternating with a slight delay. These two instruments are following something known as the Dembo pattern, named after the Shabba Rank song famous for popularizing the rhythm. Compared to this pattern, the one usually found in English pop music is way more consistent, especially in the snares. Here's how Moscow Mule might sound if it instead had that different rhythm. I think these different drums sound too rigid. The melody here is already playing mostly eighth notes, so the offbeat snare of that reggaeton pattern helps to fill in some gaps in the rhythm. While Moscow Mule is a good look at the kick and snare pattern of these reggaeton tracks, Bad Bunny doesn't limit his drums to just those two sounds. This is Agosto, track 22 on Un Verano Sin Ti, produced by Mag, La Paciencia, and Hasi. It has a tropical sound similar to Moscow Mule, in part from using that same reggaeton pattern in the drums, although here the samples in that pattern are a bit different. The kick is still here, while the snare has been swapped for a lighter sounding rim, and above both of these is something new, a shaker that adds some movement without messing up that kick snare dembo pattern. The tropical sound and pattern of these drums seems to be backed up by the melody. The melody here doesn't have too much to do with reggaeton, since the genre is defined mostly by its rhythm. But this is still a good look at the kinds of instruments Bad Bunny pairs with the style. The tropical bells in this track, and those in Moscow Mule, work with the reggaeton drums to make that summery beach sound that makes up the heart of this album. Reggaeton and its drum pattern appear all over Un Verano Sinti, setting up the project's baseline sound. Still, over the course of these 23 tracks, Bad Bunny pushes the emotions of this genre in a few different directions. While reggaeton may already have an energetic drive, there are a few tracks where Bad Bunny tests the limits of how much more aggression he can fit into the genre. Hey, titi me pregunto si tengo mucha novia. Mucha novia. Hoy tengo una, mañana otra. 
This is Titi Me Pregunto, or Auntie Asked Me, track four on Un Verano Sin Ti, produced by Mag in La Paciencia. It certainly sounds more energetic than the last two songs, so much so that Wikipedia classifies it not as reggaeton, but as dembo, a closely related, high-energy genre named after that dembo drum pattern it shares with reggaeton. If we look at the drums of this track, we can find a rhythm strikingly similar to what we've already heard. The kick and snare here follow that same dembo pattern, although this time interrupted by a shaker and cowbell. The speed of these drums is around the same too, landing in that 110 beat per minute range shared by earlier tracks like Moscow Mule. If the drums here are basically the same as those earlier reggaeton tracks, then what places this one in a different genre? I think the difference here lies not in the drums, but in the melody, or the lack of one. This 808 seems to be the focus of Titi Me Pergunto, drawing attention with the numerous octave jumps up and down. It takes the place of the tropical marimba melodies we saw earlier, and I think it gives the track enough energy to cross over from reggaeton into dembo. Titi Me Pergunto pairs that reggaeton drum pattern with some heavy bass to turn it into dembo. But is it possible to keep that same level of intensity with a different drum pattern? This is the second half of El Apegon, or The Blackout, track 16 on Un Verano Sin Ti and produced by Mag and La Paciencia. It has the same high intensity of TT Me Pergunto, as well as a similar speed, at around 118 beats per minute. The drums used to reach this intensity, though, are a bit different. While these drums sound close to the ones we've heard before, they no longer follow that reggaeton pattern. The clap now lines up with the beat, and in between every kick is an added open hi-hat. It seems like Bad Bunny has rearranged these drums into a different pattern, one used in house music, a genre starting in late 70s Chicago characterized by a repetitive kick and offbeat hi-hats. While this rhythm may no longer count as reggaeton, I think it still shows a way these same group of drum samples can be rearranged into a high-intensity track. Un Verano Sin Ti is built on a foundation of reggaeton, and for a few tracks, Bad Bunny pushes the genre's intensity to its limits, sometimes by putting emphasis on the bass, and at others by rearranging the drums entirely. This high energy direction isn't the only place Bad Bunny takes reggaeton, and other songs on this project try to capture the opposite feeling, like the melancholy of a rainy day, even in paradise. Okay. Sí, sí. Encima de mí fue que te conocí. Hey, mami, tú eres así. This is Aguacero, or Downpour, track 12 on Un Verano Sin Ti, produced by Mag and La Paciencia. This track sounds calmer than anything we've heard so far, and I think part of that comes from the tempo. At 91 beats per minute, this song is the slowest of the ones we've covered, with that relaxed speed maybe most noticeable in the drums. These drums use that same reggaeton pattern we've seen before, although dragged out slightly by that slower tempo. The samples used in this pattern also seem to be more relaxing, with fewer high frequencies than the abrasive snares on a track like Moscow Mule. Alongside these drums sits a melody that I think also plays a role in the calming sound of this track. The synth here seems to alternate between two different sustained chords, something like F sharp minor and C sharp minor. Not only does the minor aspect of these chords make this part more melancholy, but there also doesn't seem to be much of a melody beyond these chords that might do anything to pick up the mood. While Aguacero turns reggaeton introspective by slowing things down, there are times when Bad Bunny reaches that same feeling while keeping up the tempo. Okay. 
This is Andrea, track 19 on Un Verano Sinti, featuring Busca Buya and produced by Mag, Mick, and Scott. It picks up the tempo a bit to 103 beats per minute, back in the range of those earlier tracks, but it still feels reserved even at this faster speed. And I think this feeling comes from the sounds used, like those in the drums. These drums again follow that reggaeton pattern, but similar to Aguacero, the samples have some heavy filtering to cut off higher frequencies. Not only is there some roll off on the main snare-esque sample, but the background perks are so subdued as to almost be unnoticeable. Similar to these drums, the melody here also has some heavy filtering. The synth lead here plays a melody more prominent than anything on Aguacero, but the lack of high frequencies gives it an edge of melancholy that keeps it in the background behind the vocals. That finishes this look into three of the ways Bad Bunny uses reggaeton on Un Verano Sinti. To summarize, let's quickly go over each one with a new instrumental made as a brief example, starting with some tropical reggaeton that makes up the core of this album. <laughs> As far as I can tell, this is some standard reggaeton, making use of that fundamental dembo drum pattern in tracks like Moscow Mule or Agosto. In both of these songs, the reggaeton drum patterns were paired with some tropical bells to further support that Caribbean feeling. From this starting point, Bad Bunny would then sometimes make things more aggressive. <laughs> When Bad Bunny wants to bring more energy to these tracks, he might lean into Dembo, like on Titi Me Pergunto, by emphasizing the bass. Other times, he might instead turn away from reggaeton entirely, like on the house music of El Apagón. In addition to the intensity of these tracks, there are parts of this album that go in the opposite, more relaxing direction. <laughs> To explore the introspective side of reggaeton, Bad Bunny might slow things down, like the 10 beat per minute drop of Aguacero. On top of this, he might also cut out the high frequencies, putting a filter over the drums and melody like on Andrea, to add a sense of melancholy. This slower reggaeton, alongside some energetic dembo and a tropical, more baseline reggaeton, are three of the different ways I think Bad Bunny interprets the genre on Un Verano Sinti. While these summary instrumentals I made don't quite match the sonic depth of these Bad Bunny tracks, I think they still capture three of the distinct vibes on this project. Maybe you can use these ideas in your own music, or just listen to this album a little differently. Thanks for listening. Make sure to leave a comment and let me know what you think of Bad Bunny's Un Verano Sinti. Don't forget to subscribe to Sound Selection on YouTube, check out the podcast, and follow on Instagram.